Hello, boys and girls. Mrs. B here, about to read Humphrey's Mixed Up Magic Trick, brought to you by Betty G. Burney and illustrated by Priscilla Burris. Let's find out what Humphrey is up to. Humphrey's Mixed Up Magic Trick. Chapter One, Homework. I've learned about a lot of things in my job as a classroom hamster. I've learned about reading, writing, math, history, and science. I've also learned about art and music. Oh, yes, and I've also learned a lot about homework. You see, my classmates work hard in room 26, but they also work hard outside of room 26. Our teacher, Mrs. Brisbane, gives them work to do at home. I don't have to turn in my homework, but I do it anyway. I work out math problems and learn how to spell new words in a little notebook. It's a secret, and I keep it hidden behind the mirror in my cage. But one day, Mrs. Brisbane gave us a special homework assignment. Class, I want you to choose a job you think you'd like to do when you grow up, she said. Did you say a job? Repeat it, please, Richie asked. That's right, Mrs. Brisbane replied. Find out what it takes to be good at that job. Then, next Monday, you'll share what you learned with the class. And I want you to come dressed as a person who does that job. This assignment caused quite a buzz. When I grow up, I'm going to be a soccer player, lower your voice, AJ announced, and you all, and you can all cheer for me. It depends what team you're on, Garth said. Sit still, Seth, leaped out of his seat. I want to be a doctor and help sick people get well, he said. Good for you, Seth, I squeaked. I know that all he heard was squeak, 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 but at least he could tell how much I liked the idea. The other classroom pet, Og the Frog, agreed. Boing, 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 he said in his funny, twangy voice. I'm going to be a teacher just like Mrs. Brisbane, stop giggling, Gail said. It was hard to imagine a teacher who giggles as much as Gail does, but her classroom would always be fun. I'm going to be a comedian, Kirk said. Here's a joke. Why did the teacher wear sunglasses in class? I don't know, Kirk. Why? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Because her class was so bright, Kirk laughed. Mrs. Brisbane laughed too. I'm sure you will be a comedian, Kirk, and you're right. I do have a bright group of students. Then she turned to the class. You have a lot of good ideas, so just remember that the report is due Monday and come in costume. How are we supposed to know what we want to do then? Richie asked. I'm not grown up yet. Mrs. Brisbane smiled. You'll probably change your, that's true. You'll probably change your mind a few times before you do grow up. But it's still fun to think about things you'd like to do. Don't you have any ideas? Richie thought for a few seconds. I might be a chef because I like to eat. Or I might be a police officer and put bad guys in jail, he said. Or I might be an Olympic runner. I'm pretty fast. I tried to picture Richie if he had all of those jobs. He'd look pretty silly dressed in a police uniform, running down a track, carrying a tray of yummy food. Those are all good ideas, Richie, said Mrs. Brisbane said. Just pick one for your report. When the final bell rang, my classmates hurried out of the classroom. I heard Saya ask Golden Miranda what she wanted to do when she grows up. I'll tell you later, Miranda answered, but I don't think anyone else will have the same idea. 
She had a funny smile on her face. It made me very curious about what she was thinking. Once Og and I were alone in room 26, I jiggled the lock that doesn't lock on my cage. I climbed out and scurried over to his tank. Og, I already have a job as a classroom pet. So do you, I told him. Boing, 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 Og replied. But if I couldn't be a classroom pet, could I do another job? I uh, said. Og didn't answer. Instead, he dived into the water side of his tank and began to splash. I ducked out of the way because we hamsters don't like to get wet. Then I scurried back to my cage. I took out my notebook and pencil and wrote jobs I could do besides a classroom pet. I didn't write anything else because I wasn't sure what jobs a hamster could do. Of course, instead of being a classroom pet, I could be a child's pet. Many hamsters have that job and their families love them. So I scribbled, family pet. I sat and thought some more. My whiskers wiggled, my tail twitched, but I couldn't think of a single other job for a hamster. And then I remembered that Mrs. Brisbane's husband once took me to a place called Maycrest Manor. The humans staying there loved to watch me do tricks and run mazes. They were people who were recovering from being sick or getting hurt. And I have to say, I really cheered them up. So I wrote down, cheering up hamster. I thought some more. There must be many, many, many jobs for a smart and curious hamster like me. Sometimes I follow clues to figure out what problems my friends are having. So I wrote, hamster detective. And I sometimes spin, leap, twirl, and whirl to entertain my friends. They really enjoy seeing me roll around the room in my hamster ball or hang from the tippy top of my cage. So I wrote, hamster entertainer. I stared at those words for a few minutes. They just didn't seem right. So I changed it. Hamster star. I looked at my list and I was so proud. Although I never want to leave my job as a classroom pet, it was nice to know that I had choices. And it was also nice to know that I had a good start on my homework. Chapter two, Magic Miranda. The next day, I took a little nap when my classmates were outside for recess. But loud voices near my cage woke me up. It is too a real job. That was Golden Miranda speaking. Miranda Golden is a favorite friend of mine. I love her golden hair. It reminds me of my nice golden fur. I like everything about her, except for her dog, Clem. He has sharp teeth and a very bad breath, and very bad breath. It's not a job like a firefighter or a soccer player. That was AJ's loud voice. I poked my head out of my bedding. AJ was standing in front of Miranda with his arms folded. It's the job I'm doing when I grow up, she said. AJ shook his head. Even if it is a job, girls don't do it. What job, I squeaked, but I don't think anyone heard me. Then, Speak Up Saya came over. Of course women do that job, she said in her soft voice. Maybe, AJ rolled his eyes, but none of them are famous. AJ's voice got pay attention, Art's attention. AJ's right, Art stepped forward. None of them. That made Miranda look really, really, really angry. I hopped out of my bedding and climbed up the side of my cage. Mrs. Brisbane, where are you? I squeaked at the top of my tiny lungs. Just then, our teacher rushed over and asked, will someone please tell me what you're arguing about? AJ pointed at Miranda. She picked something that's not a real job. And even if it is a real job, girls don't do it. Miranda pointed at AJ. He's wrong. Calm down, both of you, Mrs. Brisbane said. What do you want to do, Miranda? Miranda glared at AJ. I'm going to be a magician. I'm going to be a great magician.
and I really mean it. Of course you do, Mrs. Brisbane said. That is a real job. There are people who make a living doing magic acts. AJ shook his head. I never saw a girl do that. Of course, girls and women are magicians, Mrs. Brisbane told him. Who is a famous girl magician, AJ asked. <sighs> Mrs. Brisbane thought for a moment. I don't know the names of many magicians. There was Houdini, of course. He was a great escape artist a long time ago. If Houdini were still alive, what would he be, Kirk asked. Before anyone could answer, Kirk said, the oldest person in the world. Everyone, everybody laughed except for AJ. Houdini was a man, he said. Maybe Miranda will be the first famous female magician, Mrs. Brisbane told him. I'll show you, AJ, Miranda said. Yes, 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 I squeaked. The bell rang and all my friends went to their tables. I didn't hear anything about magic for a while because Mrs. Brisbane sent my friends to the library. Take your notebooks, she reminded them as they headed out the door. You'll want to find out as much as you can about your jobs. Mrs. Brisbane left with the rest of the class. When we were alone, I turned toward Og's tank. I'm really good at escaping from my cage, I said, like that magician called Houdini. Boing, boing, Og hopped up and down. I sighed. I may be the best hamster escape artist in the world, but nobody knows it except you. Og dived into the water in his tank and splashed loudly. I grabbed the notebook and pencil hidden behind my mirror. Quickly, I added something to the list of jobs I could do. Escape artist. I made sure my notebook was safely back in its place when the class returned to room 26. I think you got a good start, Mrs. Brisbane said. But don't forget, I want you to come dressed for your job when you present your report on Monday and bring as many props as you'd like. Saya shyly raised her hand. Mrs. Brisbane, would it be all right if I used Humphrey for my report? Of course, Saya, Mrs. Brisbane said. No, Miranda exclaimed. I'm planning to use Humphrey. I signed up to take him home for the weekend so we can practice. I'm sorry, Saya, but it's really important. Saya looked very, very, very disappointed. Could one of you use Og? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Saya suddenly looked very, looked much happier. Yes, I'd love to have Og help me. It was great to see Saya smile. Og hopped up and down. Boing, boing, he said. All afternoon, I wondered how Miranda could use me in her magic act. Would she pull me out of a hat? It's dark and stuffy inside a hat. Would she turn me into a frog? I think one frog is enough for room 26. And I like being a hamster. Would she saw me in half? Once I saw a magician on TV saw a woman in half. Luckily, he put her back together again. No, 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 I squeaked. Please don't saw me in half. I'm already small, really small. Some of my, <clears throat> excuse me, some of my classmates began to giggle. Humphrey sounds very excited about being in your presentation, Mrs. Brisbane said. Then I remembered Miranda's terrible dog, Clem. His breath is awful and he hangs around my cage. And I'm sure he doesn't hang around my cage because he wants to be friends. Just thinking about Clem makes me shiver and quiver. I'm not excited, I shouted. I'm scared. My friends just giggled again because all they heard was squeak, squeak, squeak. Later that night, I took out my little notebook and stared at my list of hamster jobs. I had a few new ideas. The first one was report helper. Yes, I am very good at that. I thought some more about other jobs. Suddenly, I thought about Clem and his very large teeth again. 
Clem had a job for me. Dog toy. Thank goodness that is not a real job. I didn't add it to my list. But still, I didn't sleep a wink that night. Not one wink. Chapter three, Disappearing Act. Of course, I was nervous when I, I got to Miranda's house on Friday afternoon, but Clem was nowhere to be seen. Humphrey, my mom sent Clem to Grand's house for the weekend, so he wouldn't bother you, Miranda announced. That made me feel much, much, much better. I have a lot of work to do this weekend, Miranda said as she set my cage on her desk, and I need your help. I'm ready, I squeaked. First, I have to look like a magician, Miranda said. She disappeared into her closet. When she came out again, she was wearing a black jacket with long sleeves and a tall black hat. Ta-da, she said. I'm Magic Miranda now. I always call her Golden Miranda because of her golden hair. But she looked like Magic Miranda with the hat on. Miranda pulled a small table covered with a black cloth to the center of her room. There was a big box on the table. This is my magic table, she said. She opened the box and pulled out a wand. Every magician needs a wand, magic wand. Of course, I agreed. Next, Miranda put the box on the floor and brought over a stack of books. After she put them around the edge of the table, she opened my cage and gently took me out. She set me in the middle of the book so I wouldn't fall off. Then she said, Humphrey, what have you got in your ear? In my ear? I squeaked, nothing. Like all hamsters, I store food in my cheek pouches, but I don't put anything in my ears. She reached one hand toward my ear. Why look, she said, it's a dime. She held up a small silver coin. Eek, I squeaked. It didn't seem possible. Hamsters don't have much use for money and my ear is much too small to hold a dime. Miranda stroked my back with her finger and laughed. Don't worry, Humphrey, she said. It wasn't really in your ear. It's a trick. That made me feel a lot, lot, lot better. My Uncle Wally used to pull coins out of my ear when I was little, she said. When I got older, he taught me the trick. How do you do it, I asked. I had the coin hidden in my hand the whole time, she said. She did the trick again. This time, she showed me how she hid the dime between her fingers. It takes a lot of practice to learn a magic trick, Miranda explained. I probably tried this a hundred times. Wow, that's a lot of practice. You can help me with the next trick, she said. She took out a deck of cards. She shuffled them several times and told me, this is to make sure the cards are all mixed up. Miranda set the deck of cards in front of me and spread them out face down. Pick a card, she said, any card. I moved forward a few steps and sniffed one of the cards. It didn't have much of a smell, so I moved along. One of the cards smelled a little like bit like berries. I don't know why a card would smell like berries. Maybe someone was playing a card game and eating berries at the same time. I headed for the berry smelling card and sniffed some more. Yum. Miranda picked up that card. She held it so I could see the front, but she couldn't. This is the card you picked. Remember it, she said. The card had a six in one top corner and an upside down six in a bottom corner. And there were six red hearts in the middle. Got it, Miranda asked. I squeaked. She put the six of hearts back with the other cards. I'll cut the deck, she said. I watched carefully as Miranda moved sections of the deck around. 
I tried to figure out where my card went, but the backs of the cards all looked alike. Then Miranda spread the cards on the table face up. Oops. A few seconds later, she picked up a card and said, here's your card. It was my card, the six of hearts. How did she do that? It's not magic, she said. There's a secret to it. I begged her to tell me the secret, but I guess all she heard was squeak, squeak, squeak. Miranda reached down into the box and pulled out a paper cup. While she, she held the cup in one hand, she pulled a small wooden bead out of her box. Now I'll show you how to make a bead disappear, she said. Watch closely. I will, I squeaked. Miranda dropped the bead into the cup. Then she picked up her magic wand and waved it over the cup. Abracadabra, abracadé, make the bead go away she said. She set the wand back on the table and turned the cup upside down. But the bead didn't tumble out. Where could it have gone? There's no bead in the cup, Miranda said. Then she reached into her pocket. Because the bead is here. She pulled the bead out of her pocket. She really was Magic Miranda. Wow, I squeaked. Miranda bowed. I really shouldn't tell you how I did that, she said. Magicians are supposed to keep their tricks a secret. I was disappointed until Miranda added, but since you're going to be my assistant, I'll tell you. Oh, it was a clever trick. First, there were two matching beads. One of them was in her pocket the whole time. Second, there was a hole in the bottom of the cup, which she had hidden from me. When she dropped the bead into the cup, it fell through the hole and into her hand. When she turned the cup upside down, that bead stayed in her hand. Then she put her other hand into her pocket to get the second bead. It looked as if the bead had magically moved. It was a very tricky trick. Miranda showed me some more, showed me more tricks. She made a pencil stick to her hand without anything holding it on. She made a spoon bend and then brought it back to its shape. I couldn't figure out how she did those things, and she didn't tell me. Late in the afternoon, Miranda's mom came in to see how we were doing. 